Hello guys, it's Unders. Really exciting things just happened today. So Waves have released a new mastering plugin and we love Waves mastering plugins. This time it's another partner with Abbey Roads and it's another look at the TGI, but it's the TGI mastering chain and they've modeled the entire analog chain piece by piece. So we're just gonna break down what each element does what all the features of it are, and obviously we're gonna have a listen to it. So let's get in to that video. Okay guys, so here we are in Logic. I've got loaded up a mix of one of my tracks that does actually need mastering. And this is my first experience with the TG Mastering Suite. So let's get into it. Let's have a look at each individual module and what that represents and the purpose of it. First thing we are going to do is just go over the interface because it's kind of unusual. If you've been using the Sheps plugin um, where all the modules can be routed, stereo, duo, mid-side and moved around, this is going to make a bit of sense. Now, like in that plugin, these modules can be shifted around in order and can also independently process stereo, duo or mid-side processing. As a result of that, each one has its own engage, which has to be powered on. So in the top left-hand corner of each here, you can just see that we've got a little power on switch Without those active, anything you change, nothing's really going to take effect. And just to be ergonomic with the GUI, each individual module can be opened up for deeper integration, but it's not included here. So the switch on the top right hand corner of each module will open up the wide view for that module and give us some extra options in there. So we're going to have a look through all of those as we go along as well. So our first module to note is the input module. As you'd expect, we need to have an input and this being a emulation of a piece of analog equipment, that input structure was very, very important. Now across the top, we've got stereo, duo and mid side. Stereo means it's going to process as a stereo plugin. Um, it's going to equally affect the left and right channel. So for example, let's say there's a slightly louder signal in the left channel, which would cause perhaps a little bit more uh, harmonic distortion that would also be applied to the right. In duo mode, they're going to work independently here. So that left wouldn't trigger that harmonic saturation, for example. And in mid side, we obviously have our mid frequency or our mono signal being processed differently to our independent sides so anything that could sum to mono would be our mid here and our sides would be processing separately there we've then got an input gain relatively simple with minus and plus 24 db either way to balance everything out we've then got this tape equalizer which is something you don't normally see and um, the purpose of a tape equalizer best to my understanding was to do with a certain type of tape and being pushed into that for the mastering process. Um, if any of you guys have ever had a track mastered for vinyl, it has to be done in a very particular way. And some tape EQ, similar to how a vinyl EQ used to have to happen. Now they've included this in this plugin for uh, creative sonic purposes. As far as I understand, there's no real purpose for it now, unless you are specifically mastering for tape. I don't know why you would be doing that or why you're watching my video if that's what you do, but you know what, if you are, comment down below. That would be incredibly interesting to talk to. And um, yeah, it, it's there for character purposes. So it, by default, it's on flat, but we can um, push it either way, depending on the type of tape IPS we were going to, uh, 15 or 7.5, both plus and minus there. So moving on down, we've got a little switch here called Pole L. What that really is, it's an input phase invert. So it would uh, 180 flip anything coming into that input in, in terms of its phase relationship. Um, transpose would simply transpose both the left and the right channel. So for example, if we had just have a look on the metering here on the right hand side, um, we can play a little bit of my track here and we'll do the 
pole, which was going to phase invert. That won't necessarily cause a problem. But then when we introduce transpose, we should see some cancellation. I think my mix is really good in terms of its stereo relationship. So we shouldn't be seeing any phase issues. So our phase meter here should be really good. Um, but then when we transpose it, we should see it fly down to probably the minus one. So if you were mastering and there were some phase issues, you could use this if need be, or if you're using it just on particular channels and you're mastering a bus, which absolutely the guys from Abbey Roads use this process, um, you could phase invert there as well. It's just useful to have. Then got a balance between left and right. Really simple. If you've got an imbalance in, we can just ever so slightly tweak it either side and we can go quite extreme in 5 dB either side. And lastly, we've got the phase balance here. So it can give it up to a 90 degree shift, either left or right. So it's really good for mastering if there's a, a phase correlation issue. So if something's been spread a little bit too far, you can use this to balance it back out. I'm not gonna load up another example. If you were in that situation, you couldn't fix it in the mix. You would ever so slightly move the phase left or right to try and create some mono compatibility. So the next strip we're looking at is called tone and this is very much our EQ here. That's a four band EQ. We use our little switch here just to open up the GUI and we can see a little bit more detail. So here again we've got stereo, duo and mid side. Here this can be somewhat useful. So stereo processing same as before and um, we can have slightly different harmonic distortions. If we split that into duo it automatically takes link off so we're also working left and right independently. But again when it comes to that harmonic saturation if any was occurring it could occur independently left and right. And we can also do mid side and mid side EQ is particularly useful especially in mastering. Um, a really great tip, for example, is if you can't get a focus on a vocal in a track that you're looking to master, you can use mid side mode and take the sides down around the main area of that vocal and it will tend to allow it to stick out a little bit more in the mix in the middle just by reducing the sides. Really good use of mid side EQ in mastering. Nice little touch here is that we've got a filter for the frequency bands. helps us dial in the area that we want to hear the most. Now each band here has got its own type of filter change as well. As you can see at the minute they're all set across the different types but we've got a combination of two shelves and three different types of a bell. So here if we go to low it's a low shelf. We've got what's referred to as a blunt which is a really wide bell EQ. Then got a medium bell and a sharp bell as well as our high shelf there. Every single one can be switched independently. What is really important to note is that as we go through the EQ as is common case with many many analog EQs is that there are a set number of frequencies that we can go to. And in the case of the TGIs, they're fixed frequency points as well. So we can only go between the points there that we cannot move between them. There's no way to go in between different areas here. So our next module is a limiter. It's actually a compressor limiter combo. And there's some modern ingenuity happening here as well. So we'll just discuss that real quick. So again, we've got the stereo duo and mid side. And again, that obviously applies completely to the compression side of things. Obviously, duo being quite useful in a mastering concept, because if we don't have anything on, say, one side in terms of some kind of creative balancing, for example, like the old Hendrix trick of moving the whole drum kit over to one side during a part of a track, Having that on duo would cause the compressor to only work on those dynamic louder elements for that section. So in the old school TGI fashion as well, it works on this recovery system. 
So generally the slower melodic music is going to be sort of uh, the five and six and something a bit faster paced around three and four on recovery with one and two being our absolute fastest. If we have a look at the little red icon just here, we've got original, modern and limit. Original is the original circuitry emulated from the TG mastering set. Modern is a new software only basis. So this has been created with Waves and Abbey Rose together to give a more modern type of compression available in here. And then we've got Limit, which works off of the original, but has a much harder knee and obviously a limiting ratio. Makeup gain and our ratio, which is completely movable between one, which is gonna be no compression applied at all, and a hundred, which is obscene limiting. And we've got a sidechain filter. Now for the side change filter, we need to open up here and we can see we've got some extra controls given to us here. And here is where we can set our side change filters. Obviously in stereo, we can have them functioning together here. And we can engage that side chain filter, but we do need to open up the extra GUI here to be able to get access to those filters. They're not available otherwise. We can just see whether or not it has been activated. And once we've used it there, we can activate it in here. And really nice, we've then got a mix. So by default, it's actually set to 50. I would maybe set it to 100 by default to give pure compression, but this allows us to do the nice sidechain compression option just by having that mix knob in there. And then we've got our gain reduction meter just next to it. And last but not least, we have a filter module, really useful. So we've got a nice low pass, high pass. Uh, we can also have a bit of a presence EQ applied to here as well. And we've seen presence before on the TGI 1234 console, as well as the red console emulation. It's gonna be a really similar lift here but we can then just juxta that by having a nice high pass and low pass just to box off our master there. So TG Mastering also comes with a metering section, really useful. It's got a nice emulation of the uh, like plasma slash LED style meters here that are nice and accurate. You can see my mix is peaking at about 1.9. It is absolute loudest, although we have been playing a couple of bits. Got a nice phase meter and a couple of VU meters as well. We can switch it between input, gain reduction, and output as well. So now I'm just gonna take a moment or two, use a couple of presets, um, get a nice sounding master put together, and then I will just gain adjust them so that they both uh, feel like they're playing at the same level. And we can just do a little bit of an A, B comparison and have a bit of a listen that way and see if we like what's going on.
Okay, so I've taken the Greg Wells preset there and tweaked it a little bit just to get it comfortable, something that I quite like the sound of. Um, there's a couple of things that I've discovered that I really want to show you, but we're just going to listen to this. I'm just going to play the, the clean one, so the mix as it was, and then the master we've done. And they should be pretty well level matched. So um, yeah, let's roll with that. So as you can hear, it's definitely had adding a lot of uh, harmonics, a lot of extra warmth that wasn't there before. Um, it has naturally quite a roll off in terms of high frequency. So I've put it right up at 10 on presence and given it nearly a 2 dB boost. And yet it still feels a little bit darker than the original, which is interesting. Um, one thing I found that's really quite cool and sounds nifty is uh, using that tape equalizer. So it, it changes the sound profoundly. It gives quite a good tape feel, which is a bit weird because it's just EQing for the tape to go into. But uh, yeah, like the, the difference between um, going say IEC at 15 IPS and 7.5 is wildly different, um, but it has quite a nice effect on the sound. So what I'll do, I'll just let this loop flat and then I'll go through uh, 15 to 7.5 IRC and then 15 to 7.5 NAB. So that's really uh, interesting. In the end, I chose the um, 15 IRC there, even though it was a little bit duller and I had to make up for it with the presence. I just like the, the profile it gave. I think what we're going to just try real quickly as well is just uh, over pushing the input and see how hard we can actually drive the uh, compressor and limiter and everything here and see what sort of saturation we get out of it just before we uh, quit here. <laughs>
So I'm pushing it about 6 dB over what it originally was there and really slamming it. Um, let's just AB it real quick. You know what? It distorts a lot on the low end. It's really um, giving a lot of extra harmonics into the kick, but in quite a nice way. I'd probably dial it back by three, maybe four dB, just to get a touch of it. It works really nicely. Um, I'm going to have a play around using this with the nonlinear summer and maybe some other bits. But guys, that is it. That's a nice little introduction. That was my first experience as well. Um, if you want, I will do some more mastering with this and I'll upload the audio comparisons just so you can really hear the other things that are going on. Um, if you want to hear those, give me a shout in the comments below. And when I upload the video, I'll throw the link in for you. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.